My name is Peter Davis and I'm talking about living with HIV from a mostly heterosexual perspective to give that unique perspective on living with the virus. I caught HIV through two risk experiences. One with a woman um, who I found out she was injecting heroin, sharing needles, but I found that out after we'd been going out for a few weeks. And the other was a risk contact with one man, which I never expected to have, but when I was quite young, I think I was a bit lonely at the end of school and everyone disappears from those social groupings. And I met someone kind enough to take care of me for a while when I was a bit homeless and I had a risk contact with them too. I suddenly just became very, very sick um, to the point where I'd gone from playing in the football team to just being bedridden. And I had a white blood cell count done at the time and suddenly they were very low and I was quickly admitted into the infectious diseases hospital for about two weeks. And I first knew that something was going on when a, a doctor asked me, had you ever had sex with a man before? Or had you ever shared syringes with anybody? And when he asked me those questions, I knew what he was talking about. I'd seen TV commercials and campaigns. So that's when I started to think, maybe that's why I'm here. I was a bit unlucky that I'd gone a couple of times into the clinic to get my results and they weren't available and I finally phoned up to make sure that the doctor was there and you should never get it this way but he said if I ask you to come in yet again you're probably going to know what it is anyway and he told me I was HIV positive on the phone back then in 1987. For me I, that meant I really had no initial counselling about how to deal with the impact of that and my first job was to go and wake up my girlfriend that was sleeping in the next room who I've been having unprotected sex with for about six months and tell her about it. I was stupid enough to ask that cliche question, how long have I got? And because back in the mid-1980s, the doctors were mostly seeing sick people, very sick people, they told me perhaps five years. So my reaction to that was probably a prolonged state of shock as a very young person that went well into my adulthood. I tended to drop out of things, run away. I dropped out of university. I went to live in a forest for a while as a hermit after getting some bad reactions of telling HIV to friends. I just wanted to get away and, and be completely on my own. Lots of things changed in my life. I had a completely different life. I think when people get the diagnosis, they react very differently because what we're talking about initially is shock. Some people in shock, a bit like me, I was manic thinking I'm going to die and sell everything and just, you know, party like there's no tomorrow. I remember my girlfriend was very different. She was very quiet during that day. She just cried a little bit, but she didn't say much. And she really didn't say much until about six weeks later when the best miracle in my life was when she came back HIV negative. I ended up in rooming houses like we hear winos fighting in the hallways at night and that was pure depression. I didn't realise it until years later. I think back then people didn't know that you couldn't catch HIV through social contact so they were ignorant and they were afraid, you know, where nowadays people know that you can't catch it, you know, through kissing or sharing a cup with someone. I only had a couple of risk contacts and I try to get the message across that we might not want to think about HIV like when we're young, we feel bulletproof and stuff like that, but the fact is viruses don't think like humans do. They have one purpose in life, which is to get into our body and infect us. So not thinking about it won't protect us. So I give them the basic information also about safe sex, always using a condom, and also talking from a straight guy's perspective. I try to talk to young guys about if you really care about someone enough to share physically their body, then shouldn't the first thing you really care about is their physical health and safety? Because a lot of young guys will say, I don't want to use a condom and things like that. But to be honest, when I was a young guy, I think 
young men are insecure about their sexual performance and so part of that's all tied up within not talking about safe sex. So I try to tell young kids, talk about safe sex when you're just hanging out one time listening to some music with each other because it might happen for the first time when you're at a party and alcohol's involved. That's what happened for me and I was too drunk, you know, to, too drunk to think about getting a condom. So talk about it first, have the condom there and ready and she's not going to be stressed, wondering if he's got it, vice versa. And it's actually going to be a lot happier and more relaxed experience if you practice safe sex. I see a lot of ignorance and fear still amongst those teenage kids because I think they think it's not going to happen to them and so they don't want to think about it. But unfortunately amongst teenagers there's a whole gamut of sexually transmitted infections around now and chlamydia is, is rampant so we try and get the message that it's out there in the community and I say to them look 20 years ago I was a young man in my 20s sexually active you know you could have met me and I would have looked perfectly healthy so if it was around 20 years ago in a heterosexual sense, it's around now affecting heterosexuals in Australia too. Straight Arrows began as an organisation in the early 1990s and it was about six or seven blokes that got together who didn't identify as being from a gay background and living a, a gay male lifestyle. We were part of the gay community in the response to HIV and, and we formed close friendships there but we felt like we still had unique things about ourselves that we had to address as a group of, of heterosexual blokes so we formed this group that began as a peer support group. It's grown into an organisation that not only supports heterosexual men but also families and women and children living with HIV. At Straight Arrows, it was always important to us that we didn't ask people how they caught the virus because people might have different backgrounds that they don't feel comfortable with disclosing, so we always left it up to them. But when we started to go out and speak in schools about living with HIV as a person from a heterosexual background, I think it helped the kids to realise that HIV was affecting all parts of our community living in Australia. My son, I think, is probably what brought me out of depression. I had, I think, a long period of depression after getting diagnosed. I didn't even realise it back then. But really taking care, taking care of another person and being with him during those first five years of his life his mum was actually working full time and I was working part time so I spent all those wonderful days of going to playgrounds with him and that nurturing of him nurtured me back and I'm so lucky to have had that experience of being a parent living with HIV. Once I was 19 years old, just before my HIV diagnosis, I could have been sexually active with a heterosexual person. You know, thankfully, I haven't given the virus to anyone, but 25 years ago, for example, there were heterosexuals living in our community carrying HIV and not knowing. So you can't judge somebody by if they look healthy or well. You have to use condoms every time you have sex. It's the only way that you can protect yourself from HIV because there's no cure yet for HIV. There are treatments, but they're, they're a hard road. You need to protect yourself and you need to talk about safe sex. Don't be like me, wait till you're really drunk and out of it and try and think about a condom then. Talk about it sometime beforehand so everyone's relaxed about it. <laughs>